Thanks for coming to the DC booth at San Diego Comic-Con. It's now all about Joelle Jones, who is going to show us a little bit of drawing today. If you don't know Joelle, she is the creator of Lady Killer and currently the writer and artist of our Catwoman comic. So welcome, Joelle. Say hello. Hey, guys. Is this working? It's working. Okay. <laughs> So, you're going to do a little drawing for us today, I think? Yeah, I, that's what they told me I'm supposed to be doing here, so that's why I will do. Uh, sure so, works. tell us a little bit, though, about your background. How did you jump into comics? What, what got you started in this medium? Uh, well, I mean, I've read comic books forever. Um, I started by stealing comic books from my brother when I was a kid and just became obsessed. And I've, yeah, would draw everything I saw, and yeah, and then I ended up here. <laughs> Gotta take this off. I can't draw with this on. And uh, so, was it always your dream to draw Catwoman? Uh, you know, I've always been obsessed with Catwoman. Uh, I didn't really think that it would be realistic to ever get to draw her, uh, but it, things worked out better than I expected, I guess. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been incredible to be able to draw her. She's a blast. So for those looking at technique, what are you, what are you doing here? You're just laying down a basic sort of blueprint of what you're doing? How, yeah, how? I'm trying to lay it out on the page. So, you know, it's that thing of when you make a poster, you, don't want, you want to make sure that all the letters get in there and they're not crammed at the end. So I'm just kind of laying it out on the page. Uh, I'm using some reference from a sketch I've already done because... I'm not used to drawing in front of an audience, uh, and I knew that I would flub it if I didn't have a picture of something I've already drawn. Your hands look very tan in the, on the they TV. They do, thank look you. Look at the TV. <laughs> That's so nice. Uh, so, how do you usually begin? Say, if you're going to work on a cover, how do you usually begin? I mean, writers talk about the fear of the blank page. Is that frightening for you when you're like, I have to draw a single image? What do I draw? You mean like fear of a big blank page? I was just like, yeah, staring at that, and how do you even start to sort of plan what you're going to do next? Well, I usually take notes. Most of what I do is based on the story that is being told. So whether the writer is giving me that story or I'm writing it myself, you know, the first step is always the tone, I guess, like the mood of the picture. So, you know, I tend to, like, if I'm just doodling like this, I tend to try to think of what sort of uh, attitude I'm going for, what's the character I'm doing. So I, I kind of start from there and then work my way out. And then do you usually begin with the face or do you just kind of depends? Uh, do you know for like a pinup like this, uh, I'll almost always start with the face just because you got to make sure you get that fierceness down. But, <laughs> but it's usually the first thing that your eye goes to, like as a human being. You want to you stare at eyes and faces. And uh, when, how long does it take you to sort of get a handle on a character like Catwoman? Because what people maybe don't think about is you have to basically draw her looking exactly the same every time. And she's not a real person, so you don't have like a ton of photographs of her. How do you... How long does it take you to suddenly get a handle on a character like her so you can just draw her on uh, the fly? Do you know, it, take, it takes a while. I, I, I'm constantly... I don't know. I don't really get a super good grip on drawing a certain character until about three issues in. Until then, I'm really just learning on the job uh, how to draw a character. Um, so yeah, it, it takes a while, and it takes a lot of drawing and redrawing them over and over and over again. And uh, now you write for yourself and draw. Do you prefer doing that? Do you prefer having the full control? Yeah, I think any, anybody would, I, I think. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I enjoy doing it that way. Although sometimes when you work with a writer, there's this, like, especially after a stint of uh, writing for myself so much, there's a relief of taking your foot off the gas pedal and letting somebody else do all the driving and that I just get to show up and, and do all the fun stuff. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag. I never like to do one thing for too long. I really like jumping around. 
And uh, what do you recommend for artists out there who are sort of, do you have any tips for them in terms of how they can practice, how they can up their game? You know, I think that there's a, 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 you definitely have to have a tireless eye of always looking at yourself very critically, um, you know, because your mom's always going to tell you that whatever you do is great. I mean, if you have a nice mom, I assume most <laughs> people do. Um, but yeah, like nobody's going to tell you it's terrible. They'll just tell you the good things. They don't tell you you're terrible until you get really good. And then that's when they start telling you how bad you are. Uh, so, you know, you're the one that has to see how bad it is and find the flaws and fix it from there. Like, you can only rely on yourself, really, for, right. for those solutions. And then the only way to get better is to draw as much as you possibly can whenever you can. Whenever you can find those moments, you got to grab them. And particularly in front of it, a live audience at a convention. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a bit weird, but I'm, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad you guys are here. That's really nice. <laughs> what was your first gig for the DCU? Was it the Adventures of Superman digital comic that you did with Fyaklov? I th I think it was. I mean, not Vertigo. Like yeah, I, I did Vertigo before that. Yeah, you've done Token for the Minx line, and you've done Madame Xanadu, but I think, yeah, Superman was like your first gig for the digital comics. Yeah, I think so, yeah. That was really stressful. Uh, but, you know, you always kind of biff it your first time around. I did the best I could, I guess. But, um, yeah, you get better every time you do something. Is that sure. Hi, Joel. Yeah, just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the uh, wedding gown design and oh. how you were involved in that. I had so much fun designing that wedding dress. It was, it, it kind of happened uh, organically. Like, I don't know if there was a plan to have a wedding dress at all, but I saw Tom King here last year and I kind of cornered him and I'm like, if anybody does... Selena Kyle's wedding dress. I'm gonna do it. Cause I'm sick of seeing the same wedding dress over and over again. And I don't think that she would wear a big fluffy white marshmallow dress. And uh, he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then, um, yeah, I got an email from you, Jamie. And it was like, hey, you ready f to draw that dress? I'm like, sure. And it was not, I was in the middle of a really bad deadline. And I just kind of like started doodling lace. But I thought I was going to be the only one drawing that dress. And it would only be once, like a one panel thing. I had no idea that Clay Mann would have to draw it a thousand times with all that lace. And I felt awful. Well, there were like a hundred covers for Batman 50. Quite a few had the dress. Who was, was your favorite interpretation? Was one that st stood out to you in particular? I can't remember his name. The guy that did the painting, the gouache painting and the pink. Oh, Joe Jesco? Oh my God. Yeah. That was beautiful. Oh, yeah, I loved that. And uh, I know you were a J. Scott Campbell fan. Was it kind of exciting I'm to make still him draw? A J. Scott Campbell. Was it exciting fan. to make him draw all that lace? You got to put him through his paces? No, I felt bad about it. Well, I felt bad that anybody had to draw it. Uh, I just get carried away with lace and stuff. Uh, but the different interpretations it was incredible. Like everybody did such a great job. Was it your idea that she ends up stealing the dress instead of buying it? I feel like you suggested that in the meeting at the DC offices. Well, I doubt she would ever pay for it. I mean, is what I said. I just wanted to make sure. Like I, I'm a huge Catwoman fan first, and I just really wanted to make sure that Tom. I'm sure he knew this. I'm sure he didn't need me telling him this but that Selena Kyle still is a thief and she's, you know, she's gonna be, she's gonna do her. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that, you know, he remembered that when it came to the wedding and the dress that he didn't forget that she's also a baddie at we've times. Been, and we've even seen a couple of cosplays, at least in photos so far. Have you seen one in person yet? Uh, I did, I was in Chicago and I saw one in person. Uh, I. I I was blown away. I, 
I have, I don't have, I can sew, but not like the hat. I have no idea how they made that. And uh, I'm assuming we're going to see some Selena Kyle, some new Catwoman cosplay soon. I haven't seen anything yet, but uh, you talked about the panel that you approached her redesign with a little, uh, with an eye on functionality. Uh, it was less functionality, and it was more of like as an artistic eye, what I thought would service this story the most. So, because she's got the cutouts, there's a cutout here. She's got like a little bolero, <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. Um, I just really wanted it to be able to be readable, even if I'm drawing Catwoman on the page teeny tiny. I wanted to make sure that you'd be able to read her gesture and those cutouts serve that purpose. And I actually, before I designed it, I sewed the costume myself at home. Uh, I bought I bought vinyl fabric and I sewed the crappiest little cat suit you've ever seen, but I just wanted to make sure that it would move right uh, before I did it. So I've got, if any cosplayer is interested in fixing <laughs> A, a really quickly done cat costume. I, I got it. Uh, so we've got a couple minutes left. We have a couple giveaways. The first one is we actually have this wonderful Supergirl statue that Joelle designed. Uh, she's done several statues for us so far. You can see her Catwoman and her Mira over here, which have not come out yet. Who can anyone? Joel drew a Supergirl miniseries. Can anyone tell me who the writer of that miniseries was? You are correct. Your hand went up first. All right. And I, need a, I need a trivia question for the drawing. You're not eligible, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so Catwoman number one had a variant cover. Can anyone tell me who the artist on the variant cover for? Uh, yes, sir. Art term. All right. So when she's finished up, you get that drawing. Uh, so Joelle, are you, where else can people see you this weekend? Uh, I'll be signing here at the DC booth, like a bunch of different times, like every day. I think you're on at 5.30 today. I guess I'm under deadline for this drawing, too. That's right. Um, and then you have a spotlight panel on Sunday? Sunday. And then I'll be signing at the Dark Horse booth as well. All right. What time at Dark Horse, out of curiosity? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, do you know what time at Dark Horse on Sunday? Oh, there's no more? Well, we're not sure. Ask right. at Dark Horse just to be safe. That's probably the best place to ask. Um, How am I? What am I? I'm supposed to finish this right now? Uh, or you, I think often you get the unfinished piece. I know. I'm trying to make it nice. Yeah. So well, thank you, everybody, for coming out. You can let her draw instead of having to talk. I know. Um, I'm not used to chatting and drawing. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow, she is on the Artists Who Write panel. That's going to be quite the panel. She'll be signing here at DC tomorrow at 4.30. On Sunday, her spotlight panel is at noon in room 24 ABC. And then she'll be on a panel about covers from 2 to 3 in, in, the same, in 25 ABC.